So we are back in the games room and it's time for some arcade pickups. Now I've been continuing the journey of the MVS collecting. I've got a couple more off my little list, some absolute bangers as well, some absolute classic games. Uh, also I've got a couple of PCBs as well and I've been breaking shit and fixing shit. So, you know, let's, let's start off with stuff I've actually been fixing. Um, the, the first one is the something I covered in Kid Tarukan video. So I was kind of lying to you guys, I'm sorry, but I showed you the picture of this particular CPS2 um, hardware. I was using CPS2 hardware, I wasn't lying there, but I was using Darksoft because this one is actually suicided. I've actually replaced the battery on here with a, a socket that you can actually take the battery out. And obviously last time I moved, it sort of jumped out of place and uh, yeah, it died. I've been trying to revive it with the Arduino. I've got a little Arduino that I can connect to and upload a code, but it's not working. So I spent a lot of hours playing around with the Arduino and I gave up. I thought, you know, I'm sick of these batteries as well. You know, they can be kind of dangerous, especially in this heat here. You know, they can leak and then it's game over. You've got battery acid on your board. Yeah, good luck to you. So what I did is got a couple of things from Game Paradise. So I got two of these. So one's already in the board, it's already working. Uh, back to life, uh, but these are these little uh, undammed uh, Infinity Keys. Basically, you just solder the key. Each game is a unique key, uh, so you just solder appropriately uh, for your game, and you just connect it, solder it to the, the board, and then you don't need a battery anymore. It's fantastic. Uh, not too expensive. I think I'm trying to think whether I paid twenty for two or the twenty each, the, the US dollars. I got them from Hawaii in the, the uh, arcade paradise shop. Really good stuff, um, so I'm happy that the board is fully working. Um, I'm really happy with the experience, the first time I've used one of these Infinity Keys for an Undammed, so that's pretty cool, really happy with that stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna go down the route and uh, replace all my boards. Um, I don't want battery acid. Um, so yeah, another story about battery acid coming up actually. So let's talk about stuff I've been breaking, some shit I broke. Well, <laughs> Uh, I actually got a, 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 a. I won some games on the Yoho auction. I got a couple of games from the Jericho 32, Mega 32. So they're not particularly exciting games. They're two my own games, but they were dirt cheap. I thought, why not? It's a bit of a gamble. You don't know whether they're working or not. Uh, one is Suchi Pai, my young, and the other one thinks Angel Eyes or something like that. Uh, one of them even had the uh, original uh, flyers, the artwork. You see the license there. So some of these games had in Japan. The official license there. So that was all good, it arrived. It was a bit rattly when I opened up one of them, so it's, I don't know if that was uh, before or happened during uh, transit, but oh, this shows you the, the way of the arcade, you know, you gotta be careful with these, these games. You know, when you first play around with jammer boards, you're super careful with everything, you, it's like a small baby and you know, you're super careful, you don't wanna do anything to these games and you, but then, more experience, you become more relaxed, and um, then some uh, an issue happens that sort of jolts you back to the state where you've got to be careful again, where the, where you should be. You should always be careful. You always got to be in the right frame of mind. Never, never go do the stuff when you're tired because you make mistakes. You you break shit, and that's what I did. So I've got uh, I've actually got two motherboards for this. So basically, this inserts into a motherboard itself and you play the game. So I've got Game Paradise, which I covered in another one of these um, reviews that I did. Um, really good review, you should watch it. <laughs> plug, plug, plug. Uh, but it's a fantastic game. I had a working motherboard for that. I also had a broken motherboard as well from, actually, uh, from battery acid. So from a PGM board, notorious for uh, dripping acid everywhere. So what happened was, I obviously was using the working one, my uh, Game Paradise unplugged it, put this in, um, and uh, yeah, it wasn't working, it's just a green screen, uh, and then I pulled it out, and I noticed I've dented some of the pins, so if you see here that you've got these little sockets here, and on the actual motherboard you've got little tiny pins that go into it. CPS2 has a similar thing, and also the F3, but for some reason this is really temperamental, and if you slightly bend it as well, you try and straighten it, it comes right off, so I lost three pins, and I'm just, oh, so now I'm just like, whenever I touch these ones, I'm absolutely completely lining up, I'm getting torched out, I'm anything to make sure it goes in perfectly. So I thought to myself, this is not the end of the world, I can just get the connector from the, the broken board, I use it for spares, right, I can just whip the connector out, put it in, yeah, no problem. But I spent two hours getting it off the broken board, 
it was an absolute nightmare. I don't know what they've done, but it's certainly not made it so it's easy to swap out, which you would have thought so for these pieces. But it was absolute hell. Two hours, and and I know as well if I was going to do that kind of work on the actual board, I'd be breaking it because it was just too difficult. So um, I had to think of a different way. So I actually did eventually get the connector off. I noticed the way that they designed it; you can actually pull the pins out. So what I did was just individually pin swap and replace the pins. Now it did work, so I've got a fully working 32 uh, mega board again. My game paradise is working, but obviously when I was playing around with it when I'm doing the fixing, I probably nudged the sound, so I need to do some more work and that'll fix the sound. But at least now the picture is actually perfect, it's playing perfect, it's just the sound, and I'm more happy that there's issues with the sound, it's easy to fix. So I'll get around to doing that, but it just shows you, you know, if you're not in the right frame, maybe not really careful, you can just, um, you break shit, you know. And then I, what, I spent hours getting to a, a state worse off than it was before. So, lessons learned. It is the way of arcade collecting, I'm afraid. Stick to home consoles, you don't have this, this crap to deal with. So that is it for breaking and fixing shit. Actually, no, no, I actually, um, part one of getting to do a bit, something a little bit different, is I had to fix the Neo 29. So the Neo 29 set was having problems, had a cold soldier joint. So hopefully I have resolved that because I've got it up and running now. The monster pops up nicely. So I will be using that later on. You'll be seeing it. And also, unfortunately, my other um, Blast City, unfortunately, the monitor's chassis has come back. I think I've got a dead monitor. So I think I've lost one of my uh, candy caps, unfortunately. I will try and fix it. But if it's a monitor, I think it's game over. I sent the chassis all the way to Las Vegas to sharp repair. Uh, he's done a stellar job to, to fix it up. He's, you know, he's a top guy, uh, one of the best in the business. I don't know a better place to send it to. If anyone knows a closer place in the UK or something for these um, chassis and monitors, but um, certainly I recommend sharp repair. Good guy. So the next bit of kit I've got is uh, a Axum Works jammer splitter. So this little guy here was going to allow me to actually play on the candy caps. I can play some MVS games and I can actually capture the footage directly as I play. So I'm going to try something, something a little bit different later on. I'm actually going to play the games rather than just show you the footage. So if that interests you, you can see that later on. So I won't show the games as I go along. At the end of it, we'll go down to the arcade, we'll have a beer, we'll plug this baby in and we will capture some footage and we'll play some games. So. Let's get on to actual games rather than talking about footage. Uh, first up is a game from the Iron Borderline. Now this one is a midway, so unfortunately this, this first game won't actually be captured. It won't be picked up by the Retro Tink, uh, unfortunately. So that's one of the reasons why Iron Borderline doesn't actually, uh, he didn't want to keep this game. He wasn't particularly attached to it. Uh, he does a lot of streaming of um, his games. So because he couldn't really stream this one, he didn't really want to keep it. So it is a midway. Uh, it's got everything here. It's got the kick harness. It's got the soundboard. So it's got a kick harness. It's a fighter. What could it possibly be? It's a, uh, if it's a fighter midway. Yep, it is a Mortal Kombat, so I'm really happy to, to get this one. So it's my first proper Midway uh, board. I've got parts of Midway boards. I've got like part of Spy Hunter, things like that. But this is my fully working Midway board. They're a bit temperamental compared to some of the other ones, some other games, but I'm really happy to get this. Um, I, I do love my Street Fighter 2, but uh, there's nothing wrong with a bit more combat as well. For me, it's a bit more button mashing and a bit more like frantic fun. It's quite good uh, with, a, with a couple of beers if you like versus. Um, not, I don't, it's not serious as Street Fighter 2, I don't think. And also, I don't think the home ports did it justice. There's something about this in the arcades at the time. The sounds, um, the, the pitches, uh, everything about this, uh, for me, has to be in the arcades. It doesn't work in a home console. So I'm really happy to bring that experience uh, home in, in, on the candy cabs. So I may get the uh, Mortal Kombat 2 at some point, but uh, I'm really, really happy to get this one finally. So yes, Mortal Kombat 2, uh, Mortal Kombat 1, not even. Jumping ahead of myself. So I got another PCB. So the next game again is from the States. Uh, this is a relatively easy one to find. I've got all the sequels. I've th This game is, was out on the uh, MVS. So you got, um, 
the two sequels for it is a shooter. So this is Air Fighters. So this is the original Air Fighters, and then obviously two and three came out on the MVS Neo Geo. So again, this one I think was out on the SNES, I believe. I don't actually have. I think it's kind of an expensive game, isn't it? Air Fighters or uh, what's it called? Sonic Wings, I think, and other regions. But yeah, fantastic shooter. Really happy to get the original game, and I think again, home consoles don't really do this one justice. Relatively cheap as well. Easy to find this one. This was only 120 on eBay. I think. The guy was advertising for 140, and I put in a sneaky uh, offer, and he accepted. And uh, he bundled it quite nicely, and it's arrived in perfect condition. So really happy with that. I will show footage of this one. I will put that in the Blast City, and then you can see it in all its glory. So next up, we'll move on to the MVS games. So I have been making progress, but I also got a couple of repo games as well. So there are some games that are prototypes or didn't actually make it onto the system. There's no existing official MVS cards of these games. So I thought I'd go um, the AliExpress uh, sort of route. So first up is a game that is actually a homebrew. It's a Hypernoid. So uh, there's no MVS cart that I know of. It's, if there is, let me know uh, in the, the comments. I'd love to actually get an official one and support the developer. Uh, but yeah, I think there was only a ROM release of this game. It's kind of like uh, Ar Arkanoid. Good fun, really good for homebrew. So happy to get this one and uh, you'll see footage later of this one. And they, they do a quite nice little thing at AliExpress. I mean, I don't really want people chopping up um, actual live carts so that you know they just do these repos so little PCB boards inside rather than using original hardware and nice little red color as well the guy was quite cool he didn't actually have many he didn't advertise he had red but I asked him about it and uh, he looked in his back room and found me some red cars so the other one is a data risk game this is ghost lot this was uh, I think a prototype it wasn't properly released uh, and the dude gave me a green one for this one that's a green one it works quite nice with the theme it's, it's an okay game. Uh, from what I played, it seems uh, finished. It's kind of like a puzzle bobble that you see later, but it is a little bit annoying. Uh, you'll know what I mean later on. The last but not least of the uh, repos is Cross Swords 2. Now, this is an amazing game. Uh, it was released on the Neo Geo CD, but it never came out on the MVS. So, this is obviously the sequel to uh, Cross Swords. Very, very good game. I, what did I get? I got Red Wolf for that one. Really, really, really good game. Excellent game. So I actually do have the Neo Geo CD of it, so it's good to um, to play this actually on the arcade, on the cab. So those are the repos. So next up is the actual original MVS cart. So I managed to pick up three this month. So I'm really happy to slowly, slowly get through my journey. I'm getting there. I'm really getting close. So I've actually ordered some more, and uh, there's two that arrived recently. They didn't come in time for this for previous months. So I got two more for nine Borderland, which you'll see next month. So um, yeah, thank you in advance for those ones, mate. But uh, I'll thank you properly next month. But I got three from one seller off Facebook. Uh, this guy is, uh, I think it's called Fair Trade or something like that. I, I can't remember the full, full name, but he's got like a gorilla mask. Uh, actually, top guy. He's uh, based in Ireland. He's got amazing um, collection and nice couple of cabs. Really nice setup. Really top guy. Got chatting to him. Uh, originally he was selling um, us the first game so um, and then I got chatting and, and he sort of opened up that he, you know he originally had a, I think a full collection or very close to full collection so he's still selling some off so I gave him the list of what I needed and um, it came up there's two other games that he had and uh, top top guy top guy so um, yeah first up is a viewpoint so this is an isometric shooter absolutely fantastic but Difficult man. So this is the game he was actually advertising. So this one grabbed my attention. Uh, oh, it's tough man. Really tough game. I really am isometrically challenged. I don't, I'm not a big fan of isometric games, but when it comes to shooters, uh, yeah, I I, I I will play the shooters. But um, yeah, a lot of fun, but difficult. I need to develop my isometric brain to sort of uh, make improvement. We will play this one downstairs later on, so you'll see the the footage and you'll listen to the amazing tunes great game um, but you'll see how bad I am at isometric games so that is uh, viewpoint really happy to get that one uh, next up is Neo Drift Out now this is an amazing overhead uh, driving game 
fantastic. There's only three on the actual system for the MBS that are over driving games. They're all three of them pretty good, but this is probably the best one of the bunch. And it's probably one of the greatest overhead driving games that exists. It's really, it's that good. It really is that good. So I'm really happy to finally get that one. I've been after this one for ages, uh, but I can never get it for a good price. I mean, it's got a repo label, but I'm not fussed out right now. As long as the car itself is original, I'm pretty happy with it. And the price, if the price is right, I go for it. So uh, the price is definitely right this time around. And such an amazing game. You'll see later. So much fun. Out of all the three that I got so far, this is probably the one I played the most. Um, definitely really good game. So the other game is one that's everywhere at the moment because uh, the sequel has just come out and it is Andres Junos. Now this is a really tough one to find. I never see it advertised. So um, to actually, for the guys to actually say, yeah, um, yeah, you had this one as well. Oh, I was well chuffed. So really happy to get this one. This is a real c uh, simple sort of side scrolling shooter. Um, I guess it's you know, got a little bit of a, um, oh, what, what's trying to think of the game. There's a Topan game. Uh, I've got all your bases. What's it? Um, zero, uh, zero wing? Zero wing. Uh, very similar to that, the way you sort of rotate through your weapons. You'll see it later. Really, really simple, but really, really good game. And top tunes as well. So that is it for the game. So what we are going to do, we are going to go downstairs. We're going to fire up the uh, the, the arcades and, uh, you know, the, the arcades, the, the candy cabs. And we're going to grab a beer, because uh, the beer's downstairs as well. So let's, let's have a beer and let's play some games. So here we go, welcome to the arcade downstairs. We've got just a couple of candy caps here. We've got two Blast Cities. Uh, unfortunately, I mentioned before, one is very, very sick, poor chap. Um, yeah, so I've got vertical and horizontal. So the vertical is still running fine. And then for my horizontal, I'm using my Neo 29 at the moment, which is not being wired up particularly well. I need to sort it out, to be honest with you. It doesn't have a kick harness, so for Mortal Kombat, I will struggle. I struggle anyway, but uh, I'll struggle even more so. So let's have a bit of beer. We've got a bit of a side heat, uh, extra dry, and uh, let's play a little bit of Mortal Kombat. So listen to that movie. That means it just brings me back to the arcade. That's what it's all about. This is in the 90s, all summed up. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Oh, we should go for I always used to go for Ryan, so I'll stick with him. I'm not particularly good at this game. Um, I like to smash the buttons, but uh, it's a lot of fun. Like I said, I've only got three buttons, so I am limited. Turn the leg sweep is the the cheap. Yeah, it's, you can spam a little bit in this game. But not, not good enough to do it. But uh, I remember used to play this uh, in stocky. You know, Stockport, uh, the arcade there, and also in the cinema there. Here we go. Coming back to me. It just brings back the memories of this. It really does. I'm just doing one credit for each of these games because it's a few to get through. So let's see if I can get past some of you. Oh, God, no, 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 no. Oh, it's. It's more like it. Oh, no! Oh! <laughs> I'm circling it here. At least I got one off them. I can't remember the special moves for life. I should be able to do my flying attack and all the rest of it, but I can't remember. I might not even have the button set up for it as well, like I've only got three buttons. My excuses are coming through already. Oh, 
obviously Mortal Kombat is the favourite most people have done. But still this one is an absolute classic. And it looks great in the cab as well. It really looks stunning on the screen. And hopefully the sound comes through okay as well. It is an experiment, all this now. Hopefully it works. Because it's certainly a lot of fun. <laughs> Drinking beer and playing some games is a lot easier than making videos. So uh, hopefully this works out. So that was Mortal Kombat. Next we will move on to the Neo Geo stuff. I don't want to, I'll move on to the uh, vertical shooter last. Um, so let's get on some Neo Geo. Let's, let's cut. So I thought I'd just uh, play the actual full-on MVS games. I won't play the repo, otherwise it's going to take too long the video. So first up, let's play a little bit of Andrew's Tunis. Now this is a fantastic shooter, it really is. Very, very simple, very, very simple. Um, we'll get straight into it. I like to see the graphics, nice and colourful. Music, now it's pretty good. But playability wise, ah, oh, it's fantastic, very, very smooth. Uh, I'll show you what I mean about the zero sort of wing thing. It's sort of basically change between your weapons like that. I will stick with this one. The strange thing about this one is the super gun, the bomb. So you activate it uh, rather than a special button, you just hold down the actual fire and then you can do a super gun. Try and demonstrate that later. Let's try and survive a little bit longer. I haven't particularly played this one that much, to be honest with you. But it is a great game. Simple but uh, fantastic. And again, looks so good on the Super uh, Video 29. Just the colours look so crisp. This is what it's all about. But I do need to get the monitor, the chassis, worked on properly. I have done it quick repair to uh, basically heat up the solder joints just to reflow everything. But I need it to be done properly. I haven't got it, I've only had it for about a year. I need someone to probably do the chassis. Just to make sure it uh, lives a little bit longer, it's probably taken care of. If something happened to this, I'll be absolutely gutted. Let's see if I can pull off the, uh, the bomb before I die. So you hold it down, and there you go. So before, I'm only going to do one credit in here, so uh, let's see how long I survive. Oh, it's getting speeding up. Oh, it's one of these kind of games that once you get hit once, you sort of uh, lose focus and you just keep on dying. Let's change the weapon up, I think. Yep, that's it. Didn't do particularly well there, did I? But it is a lot of fun. And I highly recommend it. And I'm looking forward to getting the sequel as well. So that should be coming in the post fairly soon. And the switch. So let's move on to the next one. So next up is Viewpoint. Super Sai, and let's get cracking. You know, it's my beer levels going up and down. It's probably because I did do the uh, repo stuff first. So I'm on the, sec on the second beer. So let's play a little bit of isometric shooting, shall we? This is where you see that I'm isometrically challenged. Now just check out these tunes. Yes. You ain't getting much nice on these tubes, are you? So 
this is where the isometric stuff gets me. These scattered bullets, oh, it's a killer. You really need to get used to it. It's a lot more difficult than it looks, trust me. And this is the puzzle element, so basically, you've got to get this right, and just open these gates up. And it's more difficult with these side weapons, the side weapons, to get the way of it. Oh, good, 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 good. Really pathetic this game. You see, there is a little bit of slowdown, unfortunately. You can see that. Everything things can drop a bit here. I'm not sure I can feel that one. Oh, I don't know what I came to. <laughs> oh, God. It's a bit nuts. I'm not sure it came on many of the systems. I'm not sure if it got a uh, it was a Mega Drive or anything like that. I can't imagine it could have been bought that well. Unless there was a Saturn version of the right, but I don't think there was. By Sammy as well, they don't tend to. I mean, Sega would have ended up with the license for this. But normally, a lot of their games didn't get ported. But I'm sure someone's going to correct me. Oh, that's not good. At least we did get to the boss, so it's not too embarrassing. That's a good weapon. You've got, to, you've got to use your, uh, your boots again. Oh, that's pretty stupid. Very, very stupid. It's definitely a game you need a lot of practice. Um, it's got one that comes natural, it's only not to me, anyway. Oh, you see, you just get your angle slightly out, and it's going over. Isometrically charged, it's on. Okay, so that was Viewpoint. Oh, check it out. Check that out. Oh, electronic voices as well. You can't get any more nighties in this game. You really can't. Sip a beer to viewpoint. So let's move on to the next one, shall we? So next up is Neo Drift Out. An absolute belting game. One of my favourites. This is... I've constantly been playing this one. So the other two games I've played only a little bit now and then. But my focus has really been on this game. It's really addictive. So let's get cracked with Chuck. Let's see how far I can get. So simple. Nothing to the controls in this one. I just play so well. I'm just using standard everything. But uh, yeah, it's the more beer you have, the trickier the game is <laughs> by far. Finish. But you need a pause button actually to uh, see if it's a beer problem. Nice 
seven. There's three others very similar on the, uh, the MVS, the Neo Geo. You've got uh, over, the, is it over the top and you've got Fresh Riley. This is clearly the better one of all three of them. So addictive. It just plays so well. I'm not going for the shortcuts. Um, I'll just go for the normal route. Game. Such a good game. Not everybody loves these overheads uh, driving games, but anyone that does, this is a must. Absolute must. I'm not sure what Puffins is on though. Uh, definitely you, you, you can get on the Neo Geo CD, but uh, I'm not sure if it really got ported. I'm talking too much. Get over the line. Yeah, I'm not sure what it's ported to. But uh, emulation is your friend if you don't have that the systems. Ready? Three, two, one, go! And I'm sure it's probably on the Switch as well. They probably did a uh, one of those ports. A lot of the Neo Geo games are on the Switch. Now. Which is really good stuff. You want as many people playing these games as possible. Oh, here we go. I have to concentrate on this one. It's getting serious this level. what I was doing there. It's not good. I need to get... I need to concentrate here. I need to concentrate. I can't faff around on this. Stop saying oh no. Two, two, one. Did, did I do it? I did 0.15. Now that's as close as it's going to get. Oh, that's too close. Mm. Sip of a sigh for that one. Oof. I had to pull off the end. I was talking too much at the beginning, so lost focus. Now this one is tricky as a lot of ice. A lot of ice. Definitely be playing this one more than the others. You can see they're getting slightly further on this than the other two games where I got nowhere. Sorry about the blue there, buddy. Check the points. It just plays so well. It's just so great skits around the track. Uh, I'm not going to make this now. Doing hitting everything. I'm gonna be nowhere near this one. So I'm nowhere near it. Oh, you see how far off I'm four seconds, five seconds, maybe more? Oh, God. that was terrible. Seven seconds off that one. So that was Neo uh, Drift Down. Absolute superb game. Absolute superb game. So just one more to go, and then I need to move over to the next cab. So we are down to our last game. We have got Aero Fighters. So everything's set up for vertical mode, and we are good to go. Credit. We'll stick with the first guy, Mr. Bad Haircut, Mr. Keaton. Now there is no disguising this game, what eventually it would become. 
you will clearly see from the uh, design of the game the fact that depending on which character you get, it depends on which level you'll do. So uh, this is very Psycho S. So Mr. I think it's Nakamura is the guy who, who did these games, and you will see the power-ups as well, identical to Strikers and uh, all the rest of the Psycho games. So I believe after they did the other Air Fighters games, they left and uh, created a Psycho. Don't know too much about the details, but it's clear to see where the roots of Strikers is. And they are oh, such great games. Of course, they would do Strikers 1945 on the uh, Neo Geo as well, apart from the other two games in the series. I do love this series, I do love the dolphin in the latest as well. Classic stuff. So get as whack as that. Let's take this guy out, knock this around. But it's not too bad a game for the first game in the series. I have no idea what the SNES version is like, how well it's ported, but I can't imagine it to be able to handle it that well. Sorry to say. It didn't do shooters particularly that well. Apart from Axel and uh, a couple of others. Let's get This, I can't remember which other character you start with this one. I think when you're the Japanese character you uh, start this level. So like always you've got to, you've got to do all the different individual levels and then you'll go to the boss levels. Uh, it's always a bit, uh, always a bit extra challenging uh, after a few beers. I should have done this one first. But, uh, there you go. There is Air Fighters. Absolute classic game. Happy to uh, get all three games now. So, thank you guys for watching. I don't know if you guys can hear it or if it worked. And uh, I will see you guys later.